How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and I am a medical student that will very, very shortly be starting my final year of medical school. Now, what we're going to be going over today is an advanced level study technique, something that I only learned in about the last year or so, but something that you guys are going to be able to take and apply no matter where you're at in your current career, whether that's high school, college, university, wherever. And the reason why I'm making this video is because on YouTube so far, I've seen a ton of different videos talking about how to study for 10 hours per day, 100 hours per week, 1000 hours per month, list goes on and on about how you could sit down and study for long, long periods of time. And at first, that sounds amazing, especially if you're someone that doesn't really study that much at all right now, you're hardly studying at all. It makes sense to increase the amount of time that you're studying. But there comes a point at some time in your career where you're faced with a situation where, for example, I did four nine hour shifts this week. I did a 24 hour shift last night on Friday. Then I had class for three hours. And then on top of all that, I still had to find the time to study for my internal medicine exam, which is going to be next week. So unless I'm planning to photosynthesize for all the food that I'm supposed to be eating, there is a time limit with the amount of time you have in a week to study where it's no longer feasible for you to be studying 70 to 100 hours per week. It's just, you can't do it. So as a result, today's video is gonna be about how you could study for seven hours in only three hours. And before we get started, today's video is proudly sponsored by our awesome channel sponsor, KenHub. We are gonna talk about them way later on, but in the meantime, if you do want to check them out, the link is in the description below. So now let's just cut to the chase. The very first thing that you guys need to do if you want to increase your efficiency is learn how to take advantage of something known as Parkinson's Law. And if you've never heard of Parkinson's Law before, it was basically postulated back in the mid 1900s and states that the amount of work that you have to do expands to fill the space of time that you have allotted to complete that work. The translation is that if you give yourself two weeks to do a certain project that only takes a very short amount of time, five, six, seven hours, the vast majority of people will actually procrastinate the first week and a half to almost the complete two weeks and then blow off the entire project until the last few hours. And in that sense, you are much better off just giving yourself shorter time periods rather than these long extended time periods. And the same could be said for studying. If you're sitting down to study for eight hours and you don't actually need all of the eight hours, you're going to end up filling that additional time with being on your phone and being unfocused, thinking about different things. I found that one of the best motivators to stay focused and complete the tasks that you need to do is a little bit of pressure. There is nothing more motivating to me than coming home after a long day and realizing that if I don't sit down and study for these three hours right now, there's a very real possibility that I'm gonna be failing the test next week. So if you are one of those people that realizes that you're sitting down for seven, eight hours to study and you end up losing a lot of that time to different activities, being on your phone, just not staying focused, what I want you to do is purposely restrict the amount of time that you give yourself to study. It sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but pour yourself into the container of someone that's just a little bit more efficient than you are now when it comes to studying and watch how your studying habits improve gradually over time with that pressure constantly being applied. That, that's med school in a nutshell. Now the second advanced study tip for this video is to work on something that I like to call the one-two method when it comes to studying. Now basically what this means is that effective studying could only be broken down into two different aspects. There is the learning part of studying and then there is the applying part of studying. There is going through textbooks and online lectures and resources and taking in all that material and then there is answering the actual questions in your question banks and applying them. Now you may have actually heard of this method of studying before from a friend or another YouTube video or a professor in what is now known as active recall. And active recall basically means that you are not just going to be straight memorizing things when it comes to studying but it's in your best interest to take new pieces of information and learn how to actually apply them to multiple different situations when it comes to long-term recollection and understanding of new topics. And in medical school, this method of studying is actually built right into the program, especially when it comes to our clerkship, because I could sit down and read all about right-sided heart failure basically all day. But until I actually go to the hospital and see a patient with peripheral edema, elevated JVP, and other symptoms of right-sided heart failure, I'm not actually likely to have that long-term recollection of a topic. Now, the only problem is that in a lot of cases, you don't actually get to apply what you learn in school to real life. And that comes and bites you on the butt later on in the tests. But basically what that means in terms of studying is you gotta use the one-two method. So basically we'll set number one as learning the new material, taking our notes, going through our lectures, and two as application, answering questions and reading passages. The way that you should be studying that I found in my experience is you start off with one, then two, then one, then you take a break for the day and you move on to something else. And the next study session where you come back, you start up again with two 
and then one, and then you learn it. Breaking up a single topic over multiple different days while also making sure you have the consistency of answering passages and revisiting the same material that you already read just supercharges your study session. And I know it's very difficult, but I promise you, if you're studying in this method, it actually becomes very difficult for you to forget things in terms of long term. And I mean, while we're here, let's go ahead and talk about the actual study sessions themselves. I found that when it comes to learning the most amount of information in the shortest amount of time and remembering them for as long as possible, the only way that you could actually go about doing this is to study for large chunks of time in what I call shotgun method studying, as opposed to the Pomodoro method that some of you might be familiar with. I've just found that there is no way that you could sit down with the Pomodoro method, typical study for 45 minutes on, 15 minutes off, and hope to accomplish as much as you actually want to. And I mean, just to look at an example, let's say we were going to study hypothetically for an eight hour block in one hour chunks at a time with a 15 minute break at the end of every hour, something to look forward to. This is what a lot of students, especially in the first or second year of university will fall into. That means that in an eight hour study block, you're actually just sitting on Instagram for two hours and studying for the other six, maybe. And it gets even worse than that because I don't know about you guys, but when I have to sit down and study and know that I'm going to commit to a long study session, I need to get into the mindset of sitting down and getting work done. And if I had to restart that on the hour, every hour, there's no way that I would be able to consistently start and get back into the same mind frame of studying after a 15 minute break, I'd end up losing so much more time. So instead of that 15 minutes of Instagram and then getting started right away, you're probably, if you're studying in hour blocks, losing that 15 minutes plus up to an additional five to 10 minutes to actually get back into the mind frame of study. You're just gonna have to trust me on this one, guys. Not only is the three hour to four hour block of studying just the advanced method, it is the better method when it comes to learning things. You are much better off doing the three to four hour chunks without any breaks. And finally, the last advanced study tip for you guys is to always go into a study session with intensity and also consistency. What this means is keeping some sort of study diary, a sheet of paper will suffice, write some notes on your phone, make sure that going into the session, you know exactly what it is that you need to be studying. And as you go through, keep checking the boxes to keep you on track within your three hour window. I find that definitely the biggest change that I've made throughout the years, 10, maybe even closer. I don't even want to think about it. It's been a long time that I've been a professional student at this point, but the biggest change that I've made is switching from just going into studying, not really knowing what to do for that particular session to now being very intentional with exactly what I need to study on that day and making sure that I'm aware ahead of time how I'm going to connect that with my next study session. Because above all, one of the most important things when it comes to studying, especially when you get into the more intense courses and long exams is staying consistent. Cramming will work up until a certain point. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you guys. Earlier in my study career, I was able to do a lot of cramming and get by just fine. But nowadays, that's really not possible. A lot of the studying always works best. If every single time you go to study, you work on a little bit what you did before and then learn some new material. You take a step back and then two steps forward. That way you're linking different concepts together and always making sure that you don't go long periods of time without reviewing something that you've already learned. And that way you'll be able to consolidate things a little bit better and hopefully make sure that information is available to you when you need it on the test. And I think now is going to be a very good time to shout out today's video sponsor, Ken Hub, for sponsoring the channel, sponsoring Sponsoring these videos and allowing me to get this content out to you guys. KenHub is a total online anatomy hub and their whole website is built around these principles that we're talking about here today. They have online video lectures as well as tests, different practice tests to make sure that you are checking and using that active recall, that one too, and making sure that you can move forward with new concepts while also still remembering the old ones. If you use the link in the description below, you get 10% off their website. But if you guys can't afford the membership right now because you're a student, you're going to go ahead, check out their YouTube channel. They have hundreds of free videos trying to help people learn anatomy. There's literally Really nothing for you guys to lose so if you do need that help studying for your anatomy nailing those tests go ahead and check them out all right guys and that's going to be it for today's video those are my advanced study methods everything that i learned here in my second last year of medical school that's been able to keep me afloat so far and hopefully if i just keep this up the next year should be a breeze maybe hopefully. I hope you guys learned something from this video. And as always, if you have any questions about anything at all, they don't even have to be related to this video, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. I get back to everyone as long as you actually have an actual question. But other than that, thank you guys so much for stopping by. We will see you all on the next one. Everyone have a great weekend. Uh, see you later.